This is a short video where I'm going to walk through some spreadsheet techniques um, for finding stories in data, in particular using spreadsheet functions and spreadsheet formulae, and how to look at gender pay gap data looking at specific industry sectors. So I've downloaded the data from this web page for gender pay gap service, or specifically from the download link here, and I've downloaded the last full year of data, so not the current year, which is only partial, but the last full year of data here. That's a CSV file, so it should open up in a uh, spreadsheet. Uh, if you have any difficulties, then try importing it instead or import it into Google Sheets. I've saved this as an Excel workbook, so I've changed the format. It's no longer a CSV file because I'm gonna need more than one sheet and I've copied across the first um, seven cells here into a new sheet, so I can just focus my analysis on those. And what I'm interested in are, um, is a particular sector. So let's say I'm, say I'm interested in universities. Well, if I wanted to do that, one obvious thing I could do was use a filter. So I can go to the data uh, column here or data strip I can apply a filter by clicking on this button. And then the, the column that has the employer name in it, I could click on the filter at the top of there and I could start typing university. And that's going to filter to all the names of employers that include the word university. And I don't need to uh, do anything. It's automatically applied because of this button. We can see the numbers have gone blue and out of sequence. So that tells us the filter has been applied. And uh, we can see a number of, of universities here, but we can also see some hospitals. This one is the um, University Hospitals NHS Trust. That's quite common to have University Hospital Trusts, here's another one, here's a health board. We know that there might also be universities that don't have university in the name, uh, potentially. So is there a better way to filter this data? Well, what we can do is look to this column SIC codes. Um, when you get a new data set, if there are any fields, any columns in the data that don't make sense, then it's worth searching around to try to find out what it means, what it refers to. And if you search for SIC codes, you'll find that they are uh, standard industry codes, so our standard industrial classification codes. And you can see what those codes look like. So now we understand what this column contains, we can see that's quite useful if we want to look at a particular industry. Instead of relying on the name of the organization having the word university in it, for example, we can look at these codes and just looking at, at the filter we've applied, we can start to identify, okay, particular codes are recurring. So 85421 is in a couple of these. And the health board here doesn't have that one. So if we start to identify that, we might use that to uh, filter instead. Um, we're already starting to notice a potential problem here as well, which is that in this case, we've got a university here which has no code. So we might need to use both of these filters to find the data that we're interested in. But let's say we want to filter on SIC codes instead. Firstly, let's remove the filter we applied by clicking on the filter button. Then we can apply a filter again and we can click on the SIC codes and try 85, and I've already forgotten the number. What was that? 421, was it? Yes, 421. Now we're getting all the uh, cells that contain that value. So how many results have we got here? We've got, if I select the whole column, it will tell me at the bottom uh, 
how many cells there are with data in. Uh, we've got to include the heading as well though, so that's going to be 134. Um, let's compare that to the other method that we use, which we know has some false positives. So that's 190, so we've got quite a few false positives there. Um, we could try and combine this a little bit. So what we might do is insert a new column and um, we might say university oops, with a question mark because we're, we're not entirely sure yet. And um, we could kind of uh, filter and then just put true in this in this cell but there's another way to do this which is to use a formula called countif so countif will count uh, how many cells in a certain range meet a criteria that you set so let's um select the cell with the sic code in it which is just over here g2 so that's where we're looking. Instead of looking across a number of cells, we're just going to look in each cell in turn. The criteria we're going to apply, the criteria always has to be in quotation marks. And we could do 85421 like that. So let's um, apply that all the way down. It counts zero for this cell because there is no match in that cell. We can copy it down, it's still saying zero. Let's copy it down the whole way down the column by clicking on, double clicking on the black cross. And somewhere in here, there should be some ones. So let's apply the filter and then let's just remove the zero so we can just see the ones. So we can see here 85421, um, these are the ones that match the criteria that we're, we're trying to count. So our count if formula is only ever going to count one for one match because it's only looking in one cell or zero for zero matches. But it's very useful as a filter and we can see the results here. Now we can see another problem here. We've got a student's union. So that's something that we might want to exclude later. But we, we are at least narrowing down from over 10,000 companies to enough that we can perhaps manually filter out the false positives and the false negative well false positives are all we're going to have but the problem here is we're only getting uh, entries where it's only one sic code hopefully you'll remember from when the when i applied the filter on this column so if i take the filter off apply it again and type 85421 you can see there are all these other instances where 85421 is just one of a number of codes. Um, now, by the way, if, if you're interested in um, what this code means, we can go to, to this page about SIC codes and we can put in 85421 and we can see that refers to first degree level higher education. Um, we can also start to delete numbers here and you'll notice that the codes um, are in sections. So section C, manufacturing starts with one zero and one one. And we can carry on all the way down to eight five, which is education. So anything beginning with eight five is to do with education. We're looking specifically at first degree level higher education, but we might want to include other codes as well, or we might want to switch our focus. This is quite useful to know if we want to filter on any sort of sector. So back to our problem. Uh, our countif formula is only bringing back matches where, like this one, where it's the only code, but it's returning zero where it's one of a number of codes. And we want it to return one for Bath Spa University and Arts University Bournemouth. So we're going to uh, amend our formula a little bit. So let's turn the, the formula off. I'm going to delete all these uh, formulae that, uh, that I created before. 
Um, and I'm going to change this counter formula a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an asterisk before and after the string of characters, in this case, a string of numbers that I'm looking to match or count. Um, what the asterisk does is act as a wildcard. So what the wildcard means, what an asterisk means, is none or more of any character. So what this means now in the quotation marks is none or more of any characters, followed by eight, five, four, two, one, followed by none or more of any characters. So this is a slightly looser criteria that we're setting. We're not just going to be looking for exact matches, but cells where these, this sequence of characters, this sequence of numbers appears anywhere. Now it's still going to be zero off of the first one, but let's copy it down again and use our filter to get rid of the zeros. And now we can see it's matching the cells where 85421 is elsewhere. Now what we can start to do then is we might um, do the same thing with the word university. So we could uh, insert another column here. And in fact, I'm gonna change uh, that to university SIC and this to university. And I'm going to do the same thing again, equals count if. I'm going to count uh, not that cell, I'm going to look in this cell, the employer name, and uh, I've just realised I've typed this in row 218, which is quite a common mistake, so I'm just going to delete this formula and make sure that I'm in the first cell and my filter is turned off, or first row, I should say, second row, first row of data. So I'm making sure I'm, I'm back in the unfiltered data because I'm going to want to apply this formula to the whole column, not just the filtered cells. Equals count if. If this cell contains, and I'm going to use the asterisk again, university. Now I've typed university in capitals, but I, I seem to remember that this is not case sensitive, so it doesn't matter. But again, what this is going to look for is any characters or none, followed by the word university, followed by any characters or none. Now I get a match on this one where it was um, missing the SIC code, and I can copy that all the way down. So now I've got two columns which give me an indication that that a, a particular role might refer to a university. Um, if we want to combine those two, there's a very easy way to do that, which is to insert another column. And um, we could say something like, you know, matches criteria. And all we need to test is basically, uh, we could just add up these two numbers and then we could filter out the zeros. So we could do, it equals this plus this, okay? And then copy that down. Or we could do something like, is that number greater than zero? Uh, so we could say that. Okay, but just counting it up is fine because we can then start to filter out the zeros. So we're now getting uh, all the matches that have either an SIC code or the word university or indeed both, as in this case. And we're getting 221 results here. We can also use Countif to filter out potential uh, entries. So uh, the hospital ones, so we've got hospital, NHS trust. Well, maybe we want to remove uh, we want to identify the word hospital or NHS. So again, same process. Uh, 
hospital. And we can copy that down. And if we really wanted to uh, be fancy here, we could actually take this formula and um, subtract this number. So if it matched this, but it had hospital in it, then it goes back down to zero. But for the moment, another way we could do this is to again apply a filter. So we only want zeros here. We don't want anything with um, one in it, which has hospital. And now we're on 195, which is quite a good number. There are still going to be some false positives here. We've got health board, so maybe we uh, look for health as another one to exclude. You can carry on using this technique to carry on filtering. But hopefully you start to get the idea of how to use COUNTIF to um, create new columns that you can use to then filter the data that you've got, particularly on SIC code or keywords like university or football club, things like that. Once you're happy with your filter, you can then copy the filtered data into a new sheet. So we've got our filters applied. We're now only looking at um, companies that have either the SIC code or the word university, but don't have hospital in the title. We can now select all uh, I think I have to do control and A here or command and A, copy it and put it in a new sheet. And this might be our university's only data set. We can now start to apply pivot tables. We can uh, work out an average uh, pay gap. So let's do that to, to end with. Obviously, we still need to clean out some of this data, but the average pay gap for the companies we've got at the moment is just under 12%. So men on average earn 12% more than women at these companies. Uh, but we still need to get rid of some false positives here as well. Architectural Association, for example. 